above the power glove. It's open. More fun than shooting your neighbor's cat. And here's one that's the most unbelievable of all. It says, kill your friends guilt-free. But is this just good fun, or is an entire generation being trained and desensitized to the act of shooting people? Up the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. The two Columbine shooters in 1999, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, played one of the first FPS games, Doom. A Norwegian shooter, Anders Breivik, cited using Call of Duty to train before his attacks in Norway in 2012. Politicians and even presidents have been claiming that the leading cause of mass shootings is, in fact, violent video games. Hold it! But is this really true? Did these kids really get their inspiration from the likes of Call of Duty, Doom, even Grand Theft Auto? Clearly so many people think so, but if that's really the case, then why isn't every gamer in America either in therapy or in jail? As you can see, game sales hit a massive peak in 2008, and in 2015 we're still selling over 600 million, and games have only grown in popularity since the pandemic. It seems clear that video games are surging in America, yet that doesn't line up with the amount of violent crime incidents before 2015. So perhaps video games aren't such an urgent problem as they may immediately seem. But perhaps... So clearly, there's still some kind of effect, right? After all, why else would there be incidents like these swarming the media? Video games may not have a real connection to mass shootings, but surely there's a connection between video games and behavior like this. In fact, Clips and emotions like these are the real reason politicians and so many parents believe violent video games are linked to violent acts and shootings. Many of the studies often quoted as proving a link to gun violence only prove a temporary surge in what these studies called aggressive behaviors. And these aren't just a typical doctor down at the local clinic with a streamer nephew that he isn't too fond of. These studies were performed by the American Psychological Association and the National Institute of Health. Those are some big names, so that means there has to be some kind of link, right? Well, that depends on what you might define as aggressive. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, aggression is measured by how much hot sauce a player wants to give to an opponent. Quote, A typical experiment may compare the behavior of two groups of college students one group that plays violent video games, and one group that plays only non-violent video games. After a period of game playing, the students are told that someone who does not like hot sauce has agreed to eat it. Each participant gets to choose the quantity of hot sauce. This primitive measurement of aggression has little to no actual weight when it comes to proving violent video games cause violence. These tests are insubstantial at best, and a mockery at worst. However, there is still something there with the aforementioned gamer rage. Clearly games have some kind of connection to these emotional outbursts, right? Well, how different is it really from this? Now look, I'm not trying to insult or say that football should be limited like so many politicians believe games should, but why are video games getting the blame 
when there are studies from the National Institute of Health linking professional football team losses with instances of domestic violence. Quote, we find that upset losses by the home team, losses when the team was predicted to win by four points or more, lead to a roughly 10% increase in the number of police reports of at-home, male-on-female, intimate partner violence. While the myth of domestic violence peaking during Super Bowl Sunday has been disproven, I'm sure we've all seen some incidents like these, which show that big football matches have the same effect that these violent video games allegedly do. And even then, most of the games cited to be linked to aggression are barely violent to begin with. As evident from most of the instances of gamers lashing out in quote-unquote genuine spikes of aggression, the games aren't always violent, but often simply difficult or intentionally infuriating. All the way back to arcades, games have always been painfully difficult. Back then it was to keep players pushing in quarters, now to keep that glorious attention. And it only makes sense that when a game is made to be infuriating and difficult, it's gonna make some players mad. So clearly, video games aren't some end-all be-all villain, and there really isn't proof that it's specific to violent video games either. So that raises the question, why? Why, for the past 30 years, have news stations, politicians, and parents been placing the blame on violent video games? Well, perhaps there's more than meets the eye. Placing the blame on video games is a very American thing. Very few other countries have continued to look towards this entertainment for the answers to mass shootings and violence. Why is that? Perhaps there's a link with these mass shootings and something else. After all, America isn't the only country with gamers nationwide. Look at both China and Japan, both first and third around America's second place. While you see Japan is close behind the US in game sales, the United States clearly outclasses Japan when it comes to gun violence incidents. As you can see, where games are just as popular in other countries, they don't have the same problems with gun violence. In 2021, gun violence killed over 20,000 Americans. Since COVID-19, gun violence in America has continued to rise, while other democratic nations around the globe tighten gun laws for the safety of their citizens. It becomes clear once you take in the obvious facts that video games barely have a correlation with gun violence, the politicians have just been spewing the same lie for years and years to distract from the truth and continue to bring attention away from gun control and focus on video games instead. A study done in 2019 by the American Psychological Association shows that people are more likely to blame violent video games as a cause of school shootings by white perpetrators than by African-American perpetrators, possibly because of racial stereotypes that associate minorities with violent crime. Yet again, simply an instance of people blaming video games when something or someone is a threat to the status quo. Games have been used as a distraction for years and years so politicians and news stations can shift the attention away from gun laws and gun access. And while video games may cause a small peak in aggression for a moment, that's just simple emotion. And when it comes to appropriateness, games like Mortal Kombat caused the crisis in the 90s which led to the founding of the ESRB, or the Entertainment Software Rating Board, which has kept inappropriate video games out of the hands of young people. And when 8-year-olds start playing Grand Theft Auto, that isn't the fault of game developers. It's the fault of parents for not keeping it out of little Timmy's hands. In fact, in recent years, organizations like the National Institute of Health have gone back on original studies and stated that video games improve cognitive performance in young children. Many psychological institutions have claimed that video games show improvement in mental health. It's not the game's fault. Video games have been the target for over 30 years now. And finally, more and more people are realizing games do more good than harm. Games aren't a political issue. They aren't plaguing the minds of the youth. It's just time for the United States government to realize 
The problem isn't the joystick, it's the trigger.